Hello everyone, this is Arnon Aka, Senior Director of Sales for Canada. You are tuned in to the Top Coach Academy, which is a series of training from top coaches across the network um, that dive into topics that are important to you, our leaders. Um, topics such as recruiting, topics such as developing leadership, topics such as systems and um, uh, managing multiple challenge groups. And so we are really excited to kick off this call today. Uh, with one of our top leaders in Canada, Rosa Friesen, who's joining us here. Rosa, say hello. Hello. And we've got a whole host of other leaders that have tuned in as well. We're expecting even a lot more coming in. And they're coming in by the second. So as you're coming on to this call, if you will mute yourself, um, we'll get it going. Um, this call is being recorded. This is a call that will happen every other week. So mark it on your calendars. Uh, that every other week we will have a call. If there are specific topics that you have in mind that you want us to cover, you want these leaders to cover, uh, definitely send them forward to myself and we'll make sure that we cover those, those topics. Now, to kick it off, couldn't think of a better person. Rosa Friesen is here on the call with us. Uh, she's a five-star diamond from Calgary. Uh, you'll get a chance to hear a bit about her story. But just today, Rosa was able to pick up, not only drop off her son, but also pick up her son because she's now a full-time coach. Success leaves clues. So a couple things I would challenge you to do, uh, whether you're on this call or listening to the recording, uh, jump onto Rosa's page. Uh, get familiar with what she's doing. Uh, and, and certainly if you're on this call, we want you to ask questions. This is not um, a one-way call where we're speaking with you guys. We want you guys to learn. And so as Rosa is sharing, uh, on recruiting, be sure to write down your questions and message using the chat button right here on the Zoom on the Zoom call. So, without any further ado, I will toss the time over to Rosa. Um, Rosa, we'd love first of all to just hear about your story. How did Rosa get started in her beach body journey? All right, awesome! I'm so excited to share with you guys today. Um, for me, my Beach Buddy story goes back about eight years. That's where it started. I had just had my first child. I visited my doctor and said, hey, dude, I just keep getting fatter. I need help. Um, and he said, you're just genetically predisposed to being obese, and you should be thankful that you're just overweight. And so, like, ouch, right? Um, after being really pissed off <laughs> for a little bit, um, I did some research. I went to the internet to solve my life's problems, and um, I actually happened upon Team Beachbody, like the message boards. This was before I was even on Facebook, before Facebook was a big thing. Um, I was on the Team Beachbody message boards and found this little group of people who were about to start Slim in Six. And this is the first Slim in Six. This is not like the new version. This is the old school version. Um, and I couldn't afford the program, so I stole it from my sister-in-law and did this little challenge group. It was essentially a challenge group before Shakeology, before the challenge group age. And to my utter surprise and shock, I lost 14 pounds during that six weeks and it was the first time in my life that I had ever been successful losing weight. So I was sold on Beachbody even though I hated the program, hated it. Every day I hated it, but I got great results. So I knew that Beachbody was onto something, like these at-home workouts were legit. So I stayed in contact and actually made like close friendships with some of the girls in that group. A couple of them went on to become coaches right away. Um, Barbie Decker, who is my mentor, she became a coach right away and she decided that she was gonna coach, she just wanted to help people get fit, and she actually made a pact that she would never earn money as a beach body coach because she just wanted to help people. And so watching her journey, I got with the times and got on Facebook, we connected on Facebook, and I just watched her evolve as a coach. Three years into her coaching journey, she quit her job as a professor and went full time. And so for me, you know, having completed at that point P90X and Chilean Extreme and Turbo Fire and Turbo, uh, it's not called Turbo Kick. 
Turbo Jam. Turbo Jam. That's what it was. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of um, other Beachbody programs. I was sold not only on Beachbody programs and products, I was sold on the coaching opportunity. So she messaged me when I was in early labor with my third baby and told me coaching was coming to Canada. At that point, I was a six-figure earner with a really good corporate job. Um, my two-year-old had an accent that didn't resemble mine because he spent so much time with his nanny instead of me. And I just, like, I looked around at my life and I was just like, this is not what I wanted. So coaching came at the right time for me. I needed a change. I was looking for something different. And the rest is history. Here I am. <laughs> wow. So a series of events, and, and by the way, you don't always have to love what you do. People always say, I love what I do. You know, I love what I do from the get-go. You really hated what you did, which was the work. You love the results. You hate the workout. You love the results. And, um, and then, you, you know, from, from there to now, you become this, you know, top number three coach in, in Canada and, and just crushing record after record. And I remember um, before you were going full-time, you're actually still working uh, at that, you know, at that full-time job. And, and you had to make a conscious choice to say, if I'm going to be a coach, I'm going to be all in. So one of the things that you did when you went all in is you really did go all in. And so that's how you started recruiting other like-minded people like you. And that's one of the things that you do the very best in the network, which is recruiting like-minded people. So walk us through that. Talk to us about how you're able to recruit like a boss. You know, have you always been able to recruit like a boss? What's been the journey for you? And, you know, share your best practices when it comes to that. All right. So I am going to talk. I think somebody needs to mute. Just muted them. Okay. Um, I'm going to talk to you guys like real talk. I'm going to get right down to the nitty gritty, say things that I wish had been said to me. Um, and like kind of reality check sort of thing. I'm going to give you a few big mistakes that I made in my coaching journey and then some best practices, some things that I do, um, in order to recruit. So, um, firstly, one of the biggest mistakes that I made as a coach, especially as a new diamond coach, a one-star diamond coach, was that I went from building my business like gangbusters to going into management mode. Because I looked at my team and I'm like, oh, she could be a diamond coach, she could be a diamond coach, she could be a diamond coach. And instead of following the 80-20 rule where you spend 80% of your time growing your business and 20% of your time helping your team grow, I was more like 60-40, 60% like pushing my team and 40% on my business. And I was like, I was trying to support my team. I was offering them resources. And then it came to the point where I was pushing them to Emerald. I was pushing them to want diamond. And I was trying to do things for them that they weren't willing to do for themselves. And it was a hard lesson to learn. But reality is, guys, this is tough. But if you look at your organization today, many coaches aren't going to be in your organization two years from now. That's a tough truth. This is why Janelle Summers always, she says, um, you always have to be bringing fresh blood into your organization. And that is for a variety of reasons and you can't change it. I had a death grip on my team and I was like, you are going to be successful, right? And eventually, you, can't, you can only drag them so far before you get burned out and exhausted and you can't do it anymore. So that was one of the biggest mistakes that I made was taking my eye off the prize, which was growing my business, and really getting into management mode and trying to drag coaches along with me. Big mistake. Um, secondly, when I lost my diamond status, yes, that happened to me. I, <laughs> I was in for a shock and I just realized like, oh my goodness, I am not doing what it takes to build my business. And it was just hugely disappointing for me when coaches quit and I got back into recruiting mode and realized that I needed to keep adding coaches to the team. And then my second mistake was that when I started talking to people again, it was all about me. 
And that person was a means to an end for me. I needed to hit my target and reach my goal. Um, I listened to this audio book early on in my career, right when I was going through that phase called The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. And he says, you have to trade minds with the person that you're talking to. Put yourself in their position. What questions do they have? What insecurities do they have? Do they trust you? Right? So trade minds with them and really put yourself in their position. What, are they, what do they seem to be thinking and feeling about this conversation? Read the vibe. You can actually do that. Be a private message conversation for real. Um, so that was a big mistake, making it all about me and not seeing that person as somebody that I can help, but rather somebody who can help me reach a goal. And they really, guys, they can read that. They can feel that in the conversation in a really big way. Third big mistake was looking for the silver bullet, looking for that shortcut. Because I know the five star diamond coaches and the 10 star diamond coaches and the top 10 coaches, they have a secret and they're not telling me. I knew this. So I spent so much time, guys, maybe Instagram's the secret, maybe SEO is the secret, maybe Facebook advertising is the secret. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, maybe it's this or that or the other thing. I need to start a blog. I need to get on Pinterest. I need to do this and that and the other thing. And I was looking for the silver bullet, looking for that shortcut, and I could have spent all that time connecting with people, whether that's on Instagram or Pinterest, or YouTube, or your blog, or wherever it is, wherever the people are, people are everywhere. I could have spent that time connecting with people and doing the three vital behaviors, inviting, right? So there is no shortcut. The secret is not a secret. It's the three vital behaviors. And as you get better, the great thing is, as you get better as a coach, your capacity for the three vital behaviors grows. And you can recruit more coaches each month. You can get higher success club points. Your capacity grows as you go. Um, I wish that I had not spent so much time looking for a shortcut. So those were my three <laughs> big mistakes as a coach um, after I became a diamond. Like I said, diamond, one star, two star diamond. These are things that I really wasted time on that I wish I hadn't. Um, but it was a good learning curve for me. So let's talk about recruiting. Let's talk about sponsoring coaches. And I'm gonna put this within the context of how many coaches you should be sponsoring in a month. If your goal is to grow your business at a more, like at a slower pace, a more reasonable pace, three to five coaches a month, this is my opinion, three to five coaches a month is like minimum to account for the natural atrophy that happens in your business and to establish that bit of growth. So that's my opinion. If you really wanna grow your business like gangbusters, then seven to 10 coaches. That's my opinion. So what I'm gonna talk about is within that context, and honestly guys, I can't tell you how many people you're gonna to need to invite and talk to in order to make that goal happen. Because I don't know what your social media looks like, I don't know what you're putting out there, I don't know how, what your communication skills look like. These are things that we get better at as we go. So it's not like, there isn't a formula, like you need to invite X number of people a day in order to make X number of coaches, uh, to recruit X number of coaches in a month. It really is individual and you're gonna to have to do the legwork to figure that out, and it takes some time. Um, okay, so number one, social media. This should be the fourth vital behavior, I'm not even kidding, they need to put that in there. Social media, do you talk about coaching? Hold on, you're all saying yes you do, but do you? Do you pass the scroll test? If I scroll through your Facebook page or your profile, whatever you use to grow your business, if I scroll for a little bit, do I know that you're a coach? Do I know that I could be a coach? Do I know that you make money? Right? So without fail, when I'm talking to one of my coaches and their goal is to hit diamond, the priority becomes you have to talk about coaching. You have to talk about what you love about coaching. You have to become skilled at weaving it into your posts frequently so it's a common theme on your page and without fail my coaches think that they're posting a lot about coaching but it takes a lot of scrolling to find that post okay 
be intentional. And you, it doesn't have to be a call to action. It doesn't have to be, hey, come join my team. I'm running a sneak peek or whatever it is. It can be Transformation Tuesday. You share this story. You talk about this person's amazing transformation. And then at the bottom, you talk about how coaching is the most fulfilling job you've ever had. Hashtag that coach life, right? You weave it in. You get better at doing that as you go. But be intentional about it. And what I had to do, guys, was I had to put it in my calendar with a reminder, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, coach post. Okay, so if you're not used to it yet, and if it doesn't come naturally, second nature to you yet, then be intentional. There's nothing wrong with that. Schedule it in your planner for whatever days. Maybe you want to do it every Tuesday for Transformation Tuesday because that's an easy one. Um, but make sure that you're talking about, you know, in terms of the financial aspect, if it pays for a date night, if it pays a utility bill, if your Shakeology was paid for that month, those are accomplishments. Those are things that you can talk about. But you can also talk about your team and your challengers and that kind of thing. Um, personal development is also something I talk about in terms of coaching on my social media. So um, social media, do you pass the scroll test? right? Do people get it from scrolling a couple times on your page? Um, second thing, are you a professional or is this a hobby for you? And the indicator, whether it's right, correct or not, the indicator for me, when I look at my team, do you have an actual contact list? Not your Facebook friends list. Do you have an actual contact list? Like a coach contact list where there are a list of names. I used to have it in an enormous binder, super disorganized, Arno knows this binder, and I had like 16 pages throughout my year calendar of coach names. That was not a contact list. Your Facebook friends list might do. If you're a new diamond coach, that might be working for you right now, and scrolling your messages might be working for you right now in terms of follow-ups, but I've got to tell you guys, if you're growing your business and you, if you have big goals and big dreams, you need an actual contact list. Janelle Summers said on a call, if you, ain't, if you don't have a contact list, you ain't got nothing. And this is something, guys, that I only got good at after I became a five-star diamond coach and kick myself for, seriously, for not doing this earlier, for not putting in the work earlier. I'll tell you guys something. I had two new coach sponsorships that happened very recently. They signed up with me. They were on my contact list. I did my follow-ups. And I came to find out later that these two people were prospects from coaches on my team. They were on my contact list. I followed up. I talk about coaching on social media. And so they ended up approaching me to sign up as coaches. And unfortunately, those couple team members didn't have a contact list and didn't do that follow-up. As you're growing your business, there are going to be a lot of people who slip through your fingers and fall through the cracks if you don't have a contact list. I'm going to give you a really brief outline of what I use for a contact list. Guys, technology hates me and the feeling is mutual. So I don't do anything complicated. I have a Google spreadsheet. That's it. I have a challenge group prospect list and I have a um, coach prospect list. And in the first column, I have their name and I, I use their, like I sort by first name. So I have their name in column one, column two, I have the source where I'm talking to them, is it email, is it private message on my page, on my profile, on Instagram, wherever I've connected with that person. Column three is a note section where I just put, just for myself, little cliff notes of what happened in our conversation. She's getting married in a month. She just, like, it's not the right time for her to join, but she'd really like to join in November, maybe December, right? And then I put the date of my last contact in the next column. And that way, I can go through my contact list. And when it is my 15-minute time slot to build relationships that day, I can go down my list. 
And if, say for example, somebody was telling me like they really want to um, get back into their fitness routine before they start coaching, maybe I find a resource on Pinterest to send them, hey, I know you were saying you were having trouble getting back into that routine. I found this thing and it's got like five tips on how to stay consistent in your fitness journey or whatever it is, you know just making sure that I'm maintaining a touch point. If I didn't have that contact list, I wouldn't remember a lot of these people. And that's what happened to me <laughs> in my first couple of years as a coach. Like I said, it's only after I became a five-star diamond coach. It's only this year that I've started to make this a priority and I'm recruiting a lot more coaches than I used to. Typically people need to have four to seven interactions with you before there's that credibility there, before there's that trust in the relationship, and they'll actually move forward with you. So that's another reason this contact list is so crucial, so that you can continue building that relationship that is your responsibility, that's my responsibility as the coach, right? Okay, so I beat that to death. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is Facebook ads. I use them, I do them, and I strongly believe that as a diamond coach, um, if you're using a Facebook page, maybe you're using your profile and that's different. I'm talking about if you're using a Facebook page, I really do believe that you need to have a little marketing budget because Facebook's changed so much and Facebook pages have become a real pay to play type of thing. It's evolved, right? And their, um, their objective is to make money, right? It's still super cheap advertising when you think about it. So here's what I recommend. Um, I have this little rule of thumb that I heard from Anita Myron um, using 10% of your Beachbody earnings. And I always caution my team, don't go overboard on your Facebook ads because especially when you're starting, you don't really know what works yet and you're kind of testing the waters, don't go overboard. About 10% is a good rule of thumb. And here's what I do. So say for example, you earn $200 in August. That means you have a $20 ad budget for September. $20, keep it at that. Here's what I would recommend doing. Say you know you're gonna post your coach call to action post tomorrow. It's a really good idea to increase engagement on your page before you even make that post. So grab two posts that were super popular, like more popular than your average post, one that like went crazy, ones that went crazy, and spend $5 boosting each of those two posts. Your page engagement is going to, is going to come up quite a bit by doing that. And again, you want to take posts that were already popular because they're going to do well as a sponsored post. You never want to boost a post that isn't already organically doing well. And what I would recommend is, um, is friends of people who like your page, using that as a metric. And then in terms of age range, something about within 10 years of how old you are, where your target market is. And then when you post your coach call to action post, then use the remaining $10 for that post. Your engagement will have already come up on your page. And um, something cool is that when people engage on your page, when they like posts and comment on your post, they see more of your posts. So from those two that you've already boosted for $5 each, more of those people and their friends are going to see your coach call to action post when you actually do post it. So I don't know if I went over time or not or no, um, but just quick recap, social media, make sure that you pass the scroll test. Number two, make sure that you have an actual contact list for real. If you want this to be a business for you and not just a hobby. And thirdly, I really think if you're using a Facebook page, it's worth your while to spend about 10% of what you earn on Facebook ads. That's it.
Wow, this is some really good stuff. I especially like the Facebook ads, just kind of breaking that down. I think that's very important. Um, you know, and, and, and I love the coach test too. I mean, are, you know, are you a pro or are you a, you know, are you, are you a hobbyist, right? And I think at some point in your coaching journey, you have to make that decision. Now, um, I know Raina had a question earlier. You answered, it was, uh, how do you organize all that? That's Google spreadsheet, by the way. Uh, Rosa is, is proof that you can change your old uh -huh. habits. She had this huge book, like it was this thick and this like really thick and small. And it was like just thick. And I was like, how do you, how do you manage that? So I just remember. And so I'm glad that she changed that. Um, if you have other questions, please, please pose the questions. Um, outside of just thanking, you know, thanking Rosa, I do have a question, Rosa, on, um, on Facebook. So do you find that it's incremental, meaning you build momentum as you grow? Um, does your reach depending, depend on the reach you currently have? Have you seen since you started Facebook advertising, um, I guess a larger reach and more coaches come to you? Or have you just gotten better at targeting the people? Well, it, that's really a twofold kind of thing. I've definitely gotten better at speaking the language um, of the people that I'm targeting. And I'm going to say this, in terms of Facebook ads, if your posts suck, then Facebook ads are not going to do anything for you. In fact, you might have a situation where it doesn't spend all the money that you allocated for the post because it's, it's nobody's clicking on it right? So it will amplify what you're already doing. So definitely, I feel like I have learned a lot and gotten better at posting, but I'm absolutely gaining likes when I, um, when I boost those posts. And um, secondly, definitely getting a lot more engagement on those posts. But like I said, they have to be good posts to begin with, not junk posts. Okay. Um, I've got a follow-up question on that how do you learn to make good posts, right? So, it's, so these are all diamonds and star diamonds watching this, but there's the people that are going to be watching the recording are going to be brand new coaches. And so how did you learn how to, um, how to communicate with your following? Did you ask questions? Did you get feedback? Did you get better? Did you follow a specific course? What did you do? You know, it was a lot of, um, introspection because, uh, Earlier on, I really, I really was just trying to be like the beach body coach. And so I was following all of these coaches and emulating what they were doing and speaking their language. And it was just really not resonating. Um, there's this exercise that I did. Katie Hefner has it on her blog and it's about finding your avatar. And like you give her a name, you give her characteristics, you like her insecurities, what she likes and all of this stuff. And this person is your target market. And it's basically a mirror of you, right? So I did that exercise and it helped a ton. And then there's this other exercise um, where you write out a huge list of things. Um, actually, it's incorporated in the Diamond Boot Camp that um, that's happening right now um, you do a huge list of what differentiates you what makes you different from the average person so I did that exercise as well to really kind of figure out who I'm talking to what they're interested in what kinds of posts they they would want to see and also I used to do a lot of filler posts, like, oh, I have to post because it's 9 a.m. and I haven't posted anything yet. So I would just really quickly post anything, whatever. Um, and I wasn't respecting the time of my audience and realizing that I don't like junk posts and either do they. Love that. Love that. Um, so know, know yourself first, obviously. Okay, good. So there's like three questions that just came in, really good questions. Um, the first one is, uh, from Reina, was it pretty daunting to start your contact list at that point in your business, or did you just start with new clients moving forward, right? Um, many coaches feel overwhelmed, you know, Reina included, to track all the people, including the one that she has. That's the first question. Okay, so to sum up how I felt when I started my contact list, it was like this. Like, I was... 
Like Arno knows how I feel about organization. I did not want to do it. Here's what I recommend. Sit down for two hours and just bang out as many as you possibly can. Just one time. You don't have to do this a lot of times. Do it one time and get a good start on it. Henceforth, force yourself to do five a day. Add five a day. If they're current contacts on your Facebook, whatever. Just add five a day. Awesome. That's what I did anyway. One big project day and then maintain it. Yeah, love that analogy. It's like the author that wants to write a book that just writes two pages a day. After 30, you know, after 30 days, it's 60 pages, so on and right. so forth. So start small. A follow-up question is your call to action um, posts. Are they sponsored posts from Power Editor as opposed to boosted posts, or are they all boosted? Okay, great question, and I didn't want to get too technical, but I will. And Rosa, uh, if you don't mind me um, um, cutting into you, would you mind just explaining that to those that don't understand what that means, boosted okay. post, power editor, for those novices? Okay, so boosting a post from your page, there's the little boost button at the bottom right corner of every post where you can boost a post. And a lot of coaches waste a lot of money that way because they're just clicking boost post and they're not actually targeting who they're talking to. I do find that valuable. Um, it serves its purpose. Um, and then the ads manager contains a power editor. So it's on, it's actually on your profile. It's not on your page. It's on your profile on the left hand side in the menu. You're going to find ads manager. And then within that there is the power editor, which is super technical. And I think most people probably, um, only really need to use the ads manager. So here's what I do when I do a, uh, most of the time, I'm playing around with some stuff and experimenting right now, which you might see on Facebook. Um, but what I find to be the most effective and how I have my diamonds and star diamond coaches um, advertise is post the call to action on your page. Like post it on your page, not a dark post. And then boost it right from your page for a small amount of money. Say, for example, my coach's budget for that ad is $20 for her coach post. So I would say boost it for like $5 and make sure that you're targeting and don't just click boost post and continue. Make sure that you're going in and targeting um, who you want to serve that ad to like directly from your page. Then go back into the ads manager, click create ad, find that exact same post and then you can really narrow down your target market, um, select the age group and all of that kind of stuff, like what they're interested in, demographics like age, um, whether they're parents and all of that kind of stuff. So boost it on your page to the people who like your page so that everybody on your page sees that post. And then in the ads manager, to the friends of people who like your page. And in my opinion, that just gives you some credibility if the friend of the person likes your page, that gives you a little bit, like a little layer of credibility because they don't know you at all. So awesome. I would say $5 from, for the one on your page and then like $15 if your budget is $20, $15 for the one in the ads manager. Hope that makes sense. Awesome, awesome. Very good. It looks like you've answered Heather's question. Um, Alita asks, um, do you, um, then you also do multiple photos from the same content, right? You have a video on this that I used when I was doing my ads. The photo makes a difference. Does it make a difference? So I, I play around with stuff all the time. Like I, I experiment with things sometimes. It's crazy to me, like exact same content, but I'll try out six different pictures. This is something that you can do in the power editor. And it's crazy to me how the exact same content can get no engagement for like a couple photos and then a couple photos just like blow up like gangbusters. You can actually go in canva.com, canva.com. You can find the Facebook ad template so that it's the perfect size. Oh, very good. Great tip. 
Awesome, awesome. And if you've got other, you know, software or websites that you use, I, I, you know, please feel free to share. Um, one of the questions that came in also is you mentioned the 80-20 rule. Uh, so for the 20% of the time that you're working with, with your coaches, um, what do you focus on exactly with your team? Okay, so this has really changed over time, guys. Keep in mind that my team has really grown um, at this point. So the 20% of the time that I'm spending with my team, I post on my team page, um, sharing what I'm doing, sharing a post that did really well for me. Um, I share my call to action for my challenge group, um, share my call to action for coaching. I do a monthly calendar for my coaches as well that includes um, free, run a free group in the first week of the month when you start filling up your challenge group, um, coach sneak peek the last week of the month. So I do have a calendar for my team as well. So they have like this template to follow. And then there's also like the new coach trainings, one-on-one -on -one calls, new coach group calls, things like that. Awesome. Awesome. Wow. That's been a ton of good information. It's a deep dive into recruiting. Um, so I appreciate that, Rosa. I know that everybody appreciates it on here. Um, we're going to wrap it up. I've got actually three questions that I'm going to start asking all of our speakers on the Top Coach Academy. Um, and, and, and I think, uh, I think you've got some uh, great answers. And part of this is going to be some resources too, that you'll be able to share with people. Um, if there's any other questions, um, just make sure that you jump onto Rosa's, um, you know, personal Facebook page, Instagram. I think one of the best things that you can do is um, seeing where success is because it leaves clues. And uh, I know Rosa leaves a ton of clues and uh, certainly have given us a, a ton of clues on this, on this call. So thanks for being on with us. So to close it up, I've got um, what I call the elite three. These are three questions that I ask to every top coach academy, academy speaker. Um, and it goes like this. We'll start with the first one, uh, fitness related. What's your number one fitness secret? Morning fasted cardio. If I'm getting ready, like I'm getting ready for leadership happening in like four weeks. So first thing I do at five in the morning is half an hour of fasted cardio. Fasted cardio. All right. Very good. You've, you've heard it from uh, Rosa. Number two, um, you've talked about a, a lot of different tools, um, but when it comes to your personal development, what is your number one favorite book, podcast, program, tool that you utilize? I wish I could give five, um, but if I can only pick one, I'm going to say Success Principles by Jack Canfield. It was the very first book that I went through as a coach, and I go through it every single quarter, and I learn something every single time. I do audiobooks because of my attention span. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So it's available in audiobook for those... Yeah that love working out and listening to personal development. Awesome. Um, my last question is this, is what do you think separates successful coaches from those who give up, fail, or never get started? It's those coaches who are willing to grow even when that means getting uncomfortable. I really believe that a willingness to grow, to push yourself outside that comfort zone, that is the, the thing that separates coaches who make it and coaches who don't. It's certainly not ability. Be willing to grow and get outside of your comfort zone. What you don't have in, in, in skill uh, or talent, you can certainly replace and build that skill. Sounds like yes. it. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. Well, on those wise words, uh, Rosa, we're going to close this Zoom cast. Uh, we so appreciate you taking the time. I know you've got busy kids that just got back to school. Uh, just on behalf of everybody that's on the call and everybody that's going to be listening to the recording, thank you. Thank you for uh, your servant leadership and paying it forward. And um, for those that want to follow you again, it's Rosa Friesen, F R I E S E N, Friesen. Uh, five star diamond, a top coach in the network. Very excited to have you. This uh, uh, resume, this basically ends our Top Coach Academy. This will be going on every other week. So if you like this episode, be sure to uh, subscribe, to like, to share, to comment. 
There is more to come. Uh, appreciate you dialing in. Until then, here's to your success. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day. Bye, guys.